I'll give you like a little shift about perspective as an example to illustrate this. When we are taught and you know, with our school system, often we are shared lessons, right? We're taught things and then eventually there's gonna be a test and then we're gonna see how well we're able to do on that test. That's usually how most of our systems work. Yet the way life works, often we get the test first and then from the test, we're gonna learn the lessons we need to know. So what we were able to discover about perspective is the fact that people who are resilient, they don't quit before they even try. They try and each attempt, they're going to gain more skills, tactical tools and insights. It's a perspective shift. We also know there's a degree of acceptance, being able to work with your controllables, being able to decipher your controllables and coexist with things that are within your control and not hold so tightly to the things that are outside of your control. The fourth variable we learned was the power of hope. And I'll share with you a very brief hope-filled story which radically changed the face of human resiliency in our research. So one of the projects I was assigned to do early in my career was support members of the military when they came home from deployments. And I remember working with this one particular platoon and there was something different about these soldiers. So I did all my protocol, but then I got curious, what was it about this group that was so remarkable? So I just started to chat with them and I asked the first soldier, I'm like, hey, like, what are you looking forward to? Like you have been deployed for so long, but your head's on straight and I wanna know about this. And he said to me, doc, actually, before I deployed, I had just, I started to paint my kitchen, but I only got half done. And now that I'm home, I'm so excited to paint the rest of my kitchen. I did not see that coming. All the other soldiers started to share with me their half finished house projects that they were pretty excited about. So I asked their senior lieutenant respectfully, I'm like, sir, can you tell me why you have an entire platoon of persons who all have half finished house projects waiting for them? And what he said was very significant. He said, Robin, my soldiers, they leave half finished house projects as signs of hope for their families that they're coming home that they leave evidence on the ground that there's still work to be done here as well. And I asked that very weathered lieutenant, I said, sir, you're suggesting that hope is a choice. And he said, Robin, if you want to be of service to anyone, you'll have to find your own strategy to stay hope filled because there's a lot of noise and there's a lot of negativity. And the only person who can hold the morale is you. You have to find your own hope filled strategy. So my gentle invitation to each and every one of you, you know there's gonna be difficult seasons, you know there's gonna be setbacks, that's part of the human experience. But the key is, can you develop a hope strategy before you actually need it? So when your faith is kind of rocky and you're feeling a bit dis, you know, discouraged even, already have a plan in place that this is what I'm going to do to hold the line.